Hey guys, this is Nick, and today we're gonna go to a very happy place, which is the first time I used Linux and why I fell in love with it. So grab a warm, comfy blanket, a cup of tea, or coffee if you're that kind of person, and close your eyes because it's story time. Well, wait a minute, no, just open your eyes for a moment because it's time I told you about our sponsor, Linode. So Linode is a fantastic way to get your own Linux server up and running. It was rated the easiest cloud provider to use on G2, and it has been voted top infrastructure as a service provider by G2 and TrustRadius. Linode offers a ton of one-click deployable servers, like Owncast for example, which lets you run your own Twitch-like streaming service complete with video broadcast and chat, or Apache Guacamole. What's that you ask? Well, Guacamole is a fantastic way to get your own Linux desktop in the cloud that you can access from anywhere you want. And basically you can host that on Linode and get to any other computer and get access to that Linux desktop. It's pretty amazing. If you're more into gaming, you can also deploy your own Valheim or Minecraft server in one click. Linode has a ton of these one-click deployable apps. I use Linode to run my own Nextcloud server, which I use to run this whole channel, so I can't recommend them enough, especially since you can now create your account easily using Google or GitHub. And in the future, if you don't have a credit card, you'll be able to sign up using Google Pay as well, so that's one less barrier to get started. So if you want to get a free $100 credit to start your own Linux server, well, head over to the link in the description below and click it. So, let's begin. The year was 2006. I had just dropped out out of two years of med school and went into economics instead in college. And I needed and wanted a laptop. So I bought this refurbished Medion piece of trash. It cost me around 300 euros. It was badly scuffed and damaged at the time. And it had a one core, single core processor with one gigabyte of RAM and 30 gigabytes of real concrete hard drive. Now, what I really wanted was a MacBook because I was completely entranced with the videos of Mac OS X Tiger, the expose thing, the sleek design. That's what I wanted, but I didn't have any money. So I got this crap instead. My poor old laptop came with Windows XP pre-installed, and that's definitely one of the worst version of Windows, in my opinion, in terms of look and feel at least. So I set out to try and make it look like macOS. And I happened upon a lot of customization packs that you could install that tried to replicate that experience, but they were all full of viruses and problems, and they modified system DLLs, and they made my poor Windows XP die a lot. So I needed to find another solution. So I looked online and I found that there was something that you could customize a lot more than Windows XP and that was called Linux. It scared the crap out of me because you had to reinstall your whole computer, which I had never done in my entire life. I thought it might brick or break my computer. All my friends at the time told me that I was crazy to even think about it, but I wanted to do it anyway because I really wanted to have something that looked like a Mac. So I read up on it and I happened upon this version of Linux called Ubuntu, which was really popular at the time. And they were also the only ones that would ship for free and install CD to your house. So I ordered those and I waited. So this was my first contact with Linux ever. And it started my love affair with that little plum penguin. I knew my way around a computer. I was starting to think that all computers worked in the exact same way with that same bar on the bottom and a menu bar. And I couldn't really imagine another way of doing things about those magnificent Macs, but those were completely out of reach at the time. And this is why Ubuntu completely blew me away. It was Ubuntu 6.06, Dapper Drake, which was the first version to really be smooth enough and polished enough to be completely user-friendly. And those orange highlights, this brown wallpaper, I know a lot of people made fun of that, but to me it was incredible. It looked so different. Those two pane layouts, those three part menus, it looked so good, so different, so amazing. Hey, you gotta remember that this is what Ubuntu was up against. There is no contest here. Windows XP looks atrocious. But so what made me stick to Linux? Well, the first time that I was starting to fall in love with that system, was the fact that I had completely forgotten all about my project to theme Linux to look like Mac OS X. I loved the default orange interface with the brown accents, the gray panels. I didn't want to change that. I wanted to use that. It looked a lot better than, in my opinion, even Mac OS. It was just amazing. It also made my computer run like a fast one. It was a slow computer, even for the time, but it ran like a madman on Ubuntu. It was fast, it was pretty, it was reactive, the battery lasted longer than on XP, and it was more secure. At the time, the porcupines you downloaded through Casa or Emule, 
they were chock full of viruses. You couldn't check that easily. On Linux, you had no problems with these. So I'd say that the first thing that drew me in and made me love Linux was the experience and the user interface. But then Ubuntu got updates. Every six months, like clockwork, you got a new drop with a new look and feel, a new wallpaper, new features, new applications. It was always evolving, always changing. If you compare that to Windows, between Windows XP and Windows Vista, there were five years. Five years where your computer looked and felt the exact same. The applications didn't move. You got no new features, no new apps, no new themes. There was no contest here either. Even macOS at the time didn't get yearly updates and every update was paid for. That wasn't the case with Ubuntu. Everything was free. And you even started to get the inkling that Canonical had a specific direction they wanted to take us in with Ubuntu One, the Ubuntu Music Store. At the time, I was convinced that Canonical would be the Apple of the Linux world in, in a good sense, like having an integrated ecosystem, not in a bad sense, like locking everybody out. Now, all these changes, all this evolution is also the second main factor that made me fall in love with Linux. It was just intriguing, interesting and always moving. But not only could you get those updates and those changes, but you could also change your interface at will. This is about the same time that I discovered themes and even though I had completely forgotten for like one year or two years about my project to have something that looked and felt like a Mac, in the end I fell down the rabbit hole of theming and I ended up on KDE 3.5, which had an amazing project called Bagheera, which was basically a complete set of themes and plugins with its own configuration app that lets you basically replicate pixel per pixel the user experience of a Mac. You could define for each app the window style. You could have those brushed metal finder, but still have applications that didn't look like that on the side. You could use the older Mac OS X, the first version style or the latest version style. You had the dock with magnification. You had the global menu bar, the Apple menu, the effects, the, the, the switching cube when you move from a user to another. You could do a lot of things. And I fell down that rabbit hole and basically spent a lot more time trying to get this pixel perfect than actually using the computer. So finally, I had my wish. Even though my laptop looked terrible and didn't look like a Mac at all, my OS really did. Except I didn't get the iWork apps, the iLife apps, and it kept crashing. But it really did look like a Mac on screenshots. And then I moved to Unity and to KDE4 and there were so many possibilities, so much variety, so much choice. And that's the third main thing that drew me into Linux. The customization options, the fluidity, the fact that you could change anything that you didn't like, you could customize everything to your liking. It was just something that you could not do on any other OS. Now, Linux wasn't super stable at the time. It had a lot of crashes, reboots and updates could really break your system. And you had those proprietary drivers for AMD cards, which were messing up everything. At the time, Nvidia was the one that was praised for their support of Linux. How the tables have turned. All of this meant that you spent a lot of time fixing some crap that died on you for no reason. But it also meant that you learned a lot. I learned to create my own xorg.com file because this one was not auto-generated most of the time. I learned how to fix a lot of issues. I learned how to restore a hard drive disk after the X3 file system hadn't written correctly to it. There was a lot of things that I didn't know how to do before going in. And I learned a lot about how an OS works, how Linux works, but also how a computer works. And that's, that's an interesting journey. And that's probably the fourth thing that really drew me into the Linux experience. It taught me so much through hardship for sure, but I still learned a lot of stuff. And retrospectively, that's something that really interested me because fixing those problems on the inside was really getting me excited and making me feel like I was a super computer wizard or something. But then Tux and I broke apart. It wasn't him, it was me. Basically, I lost interest in computers or OS's. I just wanted to play games on my new PC that I had just bought. And Linux at the time wasn't great at that. You didn't have Proton. Steam didn't exist on Linux at the time. You only had Wine and Wine was bad at the time. It just didn't work and I wanted to play those games. So I went back to Windows and I kind of forgot all about Linux. I started working and on and off on the, re on the various computers that I had, I reinstalled Linux to take a look at how it felt. Mostly it was Ubuntu with Unity. But it didn't really feel 
as polished as it once did. When I compared it to Windows 7 or even to Windows Vista, Linux just didn't look right. It looked bulky, clunky, and it didn't feel right, in my opinion at least. Which meant that I never really went back to it until 2017. What reignited my passion for Linux was that I was bored. I had just left Paris, I had gotten a divorce, I moved back to Brest, which is the city where I live now, and I was super bored. I wanted to learn a new thing, and so I decided to learn how to edit videos. But for that I needed a computer, and I had zero electronics, because, well, my divorce had made me sell everything I had to be able to pay for that. So I used the little money I had saved to buy a new computer, but since I had no money, I bought it without an OS, and I decided to reinstall Linux. I settled on Elementor OS at the time because it looked cool and I liked its interface and, and the vision behind it. And there we go, it was 2000, the end of 2017 and since then I've been making Linux videos. And since then I tried all the major desktop environments. Gnome, KDE, Pantheon, Budgie, Mate, XFC, Cinnamon even, yeah, I tried, I tried them all. And I didn't find one that I didn't like. Linux has kept that evolution sense, it has kept that variety, it has kept all this learning experience, even though it's much easier now than it was back when I started with it, and probably it was even way harder before I started using it. Linux has kept all of these, and these drew me back in, like, immediately. I just couldn't see myself using anything else. I just keep loving Linux every day, because it still brings me all of this. But really, what made me fall in love with Linux isn't any of those things individually. What really makes me love Linux and made me love Linux at the time is the fact that Linux is technology personified. It's always moving, it's always evolving, it's always changing, it's always adapting to the new trends, to the new devices, to the new problems that people face, trying to bring better solutions, trying to focus on how to solve issues. Linux, to me, is the perfect avatar of technology. It's amazing, and it's janky. It moves very fast and extremely slowly on some areas. It's mastered by certain and completely misunderstood by others. It's loved and hated in the same measure. This is why I fell in love with Linux and why I'm still in love with Linux to this day. Because I love tech and there is no better representation of the utter beauty and chaos of tech than Linux. So this video was made possible by Slimbook. If you don't know about it, Slimbook is a Spain-based Linux hardware manufacturer and reseller. They have laptops, desktops for all form factors, all powers, all budgets, all keyboard layouts, and they ship worldwide. All of their devices are pre-installed with Linux as well. I only use their stuff nowadays. I can only recommend them. If you need a new Linux device, head over to the link in the description and take a look at what they've got. It's great. So thank you guys for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed, if you did don't hesitate to like or dislike if you didn't. You can also subscribe and turn on notifications and if you want to help me support this channel and turn this into a full-time job because that's happening in October, you can join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members and get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!